Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And we are a teaching center that's dedicated to excellence in hands-on skills and improving your overall knowledge in dentistry. And today we're going to cover the all ceramic crown on Acadental tooth number 22, utilizing the T-prep or the tenon prep where I leave little fins to help guide me with the reduction. So let's take a look at tooth number 22 in occlusion. You can see that there's a little bit of an opening on the mesial side and on the distal side. So when we're finished, we're going to have a little more clearance in those areas. Always check excursives, particularly on a canine, to make sure that you're getting the proper amount of guidance that you're looking for. We're going to start the preparation with the KS0. This is one millimeter in diameter. And with the T-prep, what we're going to do is we're just going to leave a portion of the preparation unprepared that will stick up out of the preparation that will remind us of where we started. It's sort of like using a preoperative putty matrix that Will guide you with how much you need to reduce except in this case the matrix we're using is from the original tooth structure. The burr is small enough to be used in this particular manner starting at the top and working your way down to achieve interproximal clearance. It looks like it gets awfully close to that premolar but we have a little thin shell of protective tooth structure there as we go through that critical area. One of the nice things about the KS0 burr is that it allows you to create a shoulder and move the burr uphill and downhill, you know, over the gingival coal area interproximally and have a shoulder created at the same time. Here you can see that we have a nice idea of how much we've reduced off the facial and the way we've reduced it, you know, following the inclines, following the shape of the tooth from the facial. So now we can turn our attention to the incisal reduction. And typically with all ceramic, we're going to want to have 1.5 millimeters to 2 millimeters of incisal clearance. Today we're going to go for 1.5. And on the shoulder areas, we're looking for 1 millimeter, maybe 1.2 millimeters at the most. We could be a little less than that. A lot of all ceramic preps can be as little as 0.5 millimeters in certain situations. But I think if you're going to go with the standard all ceramic preparation that will meet the needs of any material out there. A one millimeter 360 circumferential shoulder is going to provide us with the most security when it comes to the final restorative material being more durable. Once again just breaking through the interproximal contact with the same burr. You know nothing can be easier. We're going to do the entire preparation today basically with one burr shape two grits. We're going to use this 100 micron grit diamond for the lion's share of the reduction and then I'm going to switch over to a 30 micron grit version of the same burr which is called a KS0F and that will be used for refinement. If you've ever been prepping a tooth, you know how sometimes you can kind of lose track of where you're at with reduction. Even when you use depth cuts, you, you can kind of find yourself guessing as to how much you've really taken away. With this particular technique, there really isn't a lot of guesswork because you're always being reminded, aha, yes, that's where I started. I can see exactly how much I've removed. The lingual of the mandibular canine on this particular typodont is rather straight or rather flat. It doesn't have a very accentuated lingual fossa or an accentuated mid-lingual groove or mid-lingual ridge. It's basically just a flat surface so it's pretty easy. If it was more concave we could utilize an egg-shaped burr. In this particular case we can do the whole preparation with the same burr. And notice how we're leaving the tenon on the lingual axial, the lingual fossa area, all the way up to the incisal. So we can gain information about how much we've taken away in all of these locations, not just on the facial or the incisal, but
but we can look at everything carefully. So you can look at this from the occlusal and you can see that we're in pretty good shape. We have some irregularities obviously that we have to take care of, which we're going to go ahead and do when we switch over to the KS0F Burr. All right, so now I've got the KS0F Burr in the handpiece. It's the same diameter but this one has 30 micron grit particles. This burr is also made by Brassler and both these burrs can be obtained from our website. And we're just gonna go ahead and remove that tenon so that we can get down to the facial tooth structure. Sometimes it's nice to use it at an oblique angle like this in order to remove it more easily rather than sort of getting trapped on it and being being uh, moved around by that bump, we can just uh, hit it from the side like this and remove it quite easily. And you're just recapitulating all of the uh, original strokes you made with the initial burr, going over everything to remove any irregularities. It's a good time to make sure that you have uniformity in your shoulder 360. It's also a good time to make sure that you don't have any undercuts Undercuts are pretty easy to see on an all ceramic crown uh, because you have such uniformity in the chamfer it's really not hard to see an undercut. Uh, when you see it it's very simple you just tip the burr and angle the burr towards the undercut thereby tapering the wall a little bit more. It's amazing how this burr will just go up and down and right around the shoulder so easily. You really can't do that with a flat ended diamond can really only do it with a diamond that has the characteristics of this end, which is some, somewhat rounded. So feeling uh, pretty satisfied with how the prep is going at this point, with the bulk of the prep completed, we're going to just go ahead at this point and use the KS0F Burr but this time in the slow speed handpiece. And if you're using electric, I, I like to turn my electric handpiece down to as little as even 500 RPMs for real refinement work, particularly when I'm using my microscope, but uh, typically 2000 RPM or maybe 5000 RPM would be fine. Today I'm working in my laboratory and I don't have an electric handpiece, I'm using an air turbine and I've got this uh, slow speed working very, very slowly, very carefully, so I can feel any irregularities and remove them a lot easier. It's important to remove any sharp edges. Uh, ceramics today are incredibly strong, but they, they don't perform well when they have sharp edges on tooth structure. We want to round those off so that they can uh, not only last longer, but it'd be easier for them to be fabricated uh, if this is a milled restoration, you'd want to have slightly rounded internal features. And if it's a pressed restoration, uh, pretty much the same requirements uh, exist. You can see here that we kept the finish line super gingival a little bit, maybe half a millimeter or so super gingivally. The RGS-3 is one millimeter in diameter, and it's just such a helpful instrument because we can really verify that we're in uh, the right range of reduction. When you look at this in occlusion, you can see that there's a lot more space on the mesial because we had that when we started. But we can now use an RGS-4, which is 1.5 millimeters. And you can see that it just barely slips right up in there. And that's what we were looking for today. I don't think it would be a problem to go two millimeters on this reduction. You know, with a PFM, you really need a little more space than you do with all ceramic. So the one millimeter here with the RGS-3, just double checking. I think the prep is almost completed. Uh, it was a pretty straightforward preparation and I think that it can be a very confusing prep because you don't have a lot of the same landmarks that you normally would have with other preparations, particularly maxillary anterior preparations. The mandibular anterior preparations for all ceramic can be tricky unless we have a technique like we use today 
utilizing this T-Prep design, which I think can be very, very helpful. So I want to thank you for the time you spent watching the video and I have a lot of requests so keep the requests coming because uh, I'm, I've got a list of videos that uh, we're going to make for everybody and um, I really appreciate your comments and feedback. I'm here to help and I wish you all the best. Take care.